I received orders to be deployed to Mosul, Iraq, where I knew I was going to have to leave my family, my friends, to protect the Constitution of the United States. And coming home and telling my beautiful bride of only a few months that I was leaving, I remember her asking me, well, do you really have to go? And it was times like that that I had to really think, am I here for a reason? Am I here for a purpose? It was actually our one-year wedding anniversary, and Scotty called me at 11.50, so he made it right before midnight to wish me a happy anniversary. And as he was getting off the phone, he said, goodbye, I'm heading to lunch. But we had received intelligence that there was a suicide car bomb out there. The terrorists attacked us every day. Being deployed six months, I was in front of a suspicious vehicle. Well, I knew the best thing to do was to not allow him to escape. He looked over his left shoulder, raised his hands off the steering wheel, then boom. My world went black. The Yahoo News feed pulled up a Mosul uh, mess hall bombing at lunchtime, and immediately, I got sick to my stomach, I went and turned on the news, and sure enough, uh, someone had came in and blown themselves up. From Iraq, a horrific suicide bombing near Baghdad. Ripped through a busy market on Thursday. And I, I wrote in my journal that it was the worst day of my life. I had no idea of what was yet to come. The President of the United States of America has awarded the Purple Heart to First Lieutenant Scotty Michael Smiley, United States Army. Wounds received in action. It was once I began to realize something happened to me, I lost my eyes and, and really understanding that I'm not in a dream. This is a nightmare. Once the medicine and, and my recovery really began, they take me out of, out of the medically induced coma, I really began to understand where I was, what had happened, and as the story was repeated back to me several times, I understood this is, this is my new life. I couldn't move my right foot, my, my right hand was weak. Um, I, I just, I didn't know how I was gonna live life. I couldn't do anything. You know, being able to run fast and, and to just do anything you ever wanted to do, and now you can't even move, let alone you can't see. You, you never will be able to see again. I chose to, to be angry at my wife, at family and friends and everyone because of what my circumstances were. And as a result, like, I just got deeper and deeper and darker and darker. The heaviness of what it was going to take. And that was the darkest that I'd ever been. And there was people that tried to come in every day to visit me. Toby Keith, he's a country singer, wanted to come say hi. No, I don't want to see him. Gary Sinise, an actor. He was Lieutenant Dan in Forrest Gump. No, don't want to see him. Three star, four star generals. No, I don't want to see any of them. And one day, my wife came into the room and said, Scotty, Andrew wants to say hi. And I knew it was Andrew Harris, a boy who I had taught Sunday school years earlier that he had driven with his dad from West Point, New York to come and say hi to me. That I realized that I could still live life. That a little boy still looked up to me. That people, and that God could still use me in an amazing way. Though I didn't have a clue how, if a little boy still looked up to me and looked at me as an example, I knew that God had me here for a reason. But I had to make a choice. It was a brief moment of brightness. And in that moment, my gears started turning. I sat up in my bed and declared, I'm going to take a shower. Tiffany, who would return to my side, freaked out. Scotty, sit back down, she pleaded. But I would not listen. I said with more force, I'm going to take a shower. Cold water sprayed down upon me. I stood there motionless. It was the most horrible shower I've ever taken. Lonely, cold, and dark, but in a small way it washed away some of my helplessness. 
I had gotten out of that bed and showered. One step forward in a journey with no end in sight, to a new hope, a hope unseen. Iron Man Coeur d'Alene, story of the day Sunday was about a Spokane athlete who ran the Coeur d'Alene Ironman in the dark. KXY4 News has followed Scotty Smiley's journey since April, the Army Major blinded by a suicide bomber in Iraq 10 years ago, and he's done everything from climbing mountains to surfing since then. But he wanted to try his first Ironman. I knew I wanted to stay in shape, and what more will make you in shape than a competition, than, than, than an event? And so I had some wild hair came out, and I said, asked my brother-in-law, hey, do you want to do an Ironman with me? You know, there's 101 ways to, to not have the obstacle prevent you. It's just an opportunity that you can better yourself and, and be more positive. The Iron Man. You see, I'm blind in this Iron Man. Listen to the national anthem and the cannon go off. As tears were in my eyes, I knew it was going to be an awesome day. And as those 112 miles on the bike ended, it's now me falling apart. It was beyond miserable. The dropout rate was the highest in Ironman history. They ran out of ambulances to pick up people. They were borrowing trucks. People would come back and say it's mayhem out there. I wanted to quit. I wanted to give up. I talked to Scotty's wife. There was about, there were about six miles to go. Scotty had been hurting and he said, six miles, let's go. And they did. Obviously, it's extremely emotional just to witness it. It's crazy to say after 13 miles, my wife saw my pale face. I wasn't eating much, I wasn't drinking. She knew where my mind was and it, it wasn't a good place. And she screamed over the audience and said, Scotty, do not give up. You have to do this and you need to know you're not doing this just for the men and women who didn't make it back, but you're doing it for those that made it back and are still fighting. He can't see them, but you know he feels it. This crowd in tears and on their feet, making sure he hears those words one more time. Major Scott Smiley, you are I take full responsibility uh, for what had happened to me. I still wouldn't change a thing because there's so much I can do and there's so much that I can give back to make this world a better place. I always like to say like, well, Scotty had the vision. You know, something was taken from him and in us, but then something was also given back and it was it's a beautiful vision of our world in a whole different perspective. Do what you are doing to the best of your ability, no matter what, no matter what obstacles. Surround yourself with men and women that support you, that don't detract you, no matter what you're faced with, that you still live a purposeful life.